the guara plant. Now, the thing about the guara plant is a must-have in your garden. Now, look at these beautiful plants. I mean, look at the flowers, how tall they get. And actually, I haven't pruned this down. And I was just standing here and lifting one of those stalks up. And I realized they do get quite high. Now, the thing is, is that I have the white variety, which has a bit of pink in it. But I also have this brilliant beautiful pink variety. So the thing about this plant, it is native to Texas and Louisiana, but also for those who have it in their garden, there are different names for it. It's known as the bee blossom and it's also known as the Indian feather. And another name for it is the wand flower. Now I will explain. As the wind blows these beautiful flowers, where people actually describe them as they look like butterflies, is as it does blow, they do sort of waft around in the wind and it's so delightful to look at. Now the thing is, is that uh, first of all about this plant is that it is a perennial but in some places where the climate is a bit colder it does come, you can have it as an annual but we'll go into that once we talk about the overwatering. So my name is Alice and I am the Red Soil Gardener and welcome back to my channel. So what is it about this plant? First of all, if you want to plant this plant, it likes a full sun, but it can also survive in partial sun. Now, the other thing is about this plant is that it, it does like sandy or loamy sort of soil, but it has to be a really well-drained soil. It is not a fussy plant. They say that this plant is actually an ideal plant that you can have that operates on neglect, but because it is so sturdy. Now, the other thing is that where would you put it? I think what is lovely is that you could have it in a garden but have it all clustered together or even get two different varieties. So you have a white and you have a pink all blending together or you could put it in a rock garden or you could actually have it along your borders because as it, the wind blows it does add texture and you get this lovely waft of these lovely butterfly looking plants. Now the other thing about this plant which is really great at this particular time as you're going into autumn is basically it does survive right into autumn and you do get a lot of blooms. Now the whole thing about getting blooms we're not looking at really deadheading the plant but what you do is in the middle of summer do cut out or cut down all this foliage which is the flower spike cut it down and within two three weeks you'll see the little baby's uh, flower heads sprouting out and within six weeks you will get again a whole array of full blossoms. Now the other thing is that you know with this flower as you as you see it's just everywhere and some of it is bent backwards and I will I will during this episode do I will chop it down and we follow it up but the thing about it is that as you do chop it down in midsummer is that it's a way of also trying to tidy it up because as I said is that they do grow quite tall and sometimes Sometimes it can look a bit messy, but by cropping it, you don't lose out on anything because it will blossom again. Now, when you do get into overwintering, what do you do? If you're living in a climate that you don't get so severe frost, is what I would do is actually chop it down to about six inches, right down to about six inches and leave it like that through the winter. Because once you do chop it down to base, you may even lose the plant. Once you do get into early spring and your plant is actually at this point, all these flower spikes are just twigs. Don't pull 
those twigs out because as it gets into spring, you will get shooting. And then when you do get into April, when it's getting warmer, this is the point because remember, we've chopped it down to six inches and we've gone through the winter. Is basically, is once you do get to April, this is when you can actually chop it down to its base and leaving maybe about uh, two inches of foliage because now this is the time when it's going to revive and start producing its flowers. Now, in terms of propagation, how do you propagate this plant? First of all, the plant itself is self-seeding and they do have other plants, the uh, same, uh, same sort of varieties that are seedless, but basically the plant is self-seeding. And so you can collect those seeds and then you can sow them during the, the spring and then have it ready coming out for the summer for the summer and the autumn. But the other thing is you can do it through division where you actually take the plant, which I will show you, and you try to separate the babies from the tap root. But the tap root is actually quite delicate and I really don't want to hurt it, but we will try to get those little babies and propagate it and follow it up. The last way of propagating, which I've never done, but I will try it, is basically is a stem propagation where you do actually go down because the thing about this plant it does grow grow in clumps as it matures it gets wider and it can grow depending on the weather it can actually grow to about three feet wide but in certain areas where you don't get such hot weather it can it will grow smaller but so basically here is that I would go down here to the base and take my cutting from there, a nice firm cutting that I could eventually propagate and replicate this plant. So here I am with my cuttings. Now the thing is, is that you shouldn't feel bad about cutting down your lovely flowers because the more you do prune down, especially in midsummer, as I mentioned earlier, is you're going to actually encourage more blooms. You will get encourage more flower spikes to come up. So I wouldn't feel so bad. So what I'm doing now is actually making the cuttings for a propagation, uh, for a propagation. And these are the few stems that we do have. Now, as we said, is that when we did cut, we went close to the base and you get the greener stems there and they're much more firmer and they're great for propagation. So what I'm going to do with this one, I'll show you, is I'm going to snip the top here because we know that's where the flower spike comes. Just snip it. So what I've done is I've snipped some of these as you see and as we know these are the nodes where the where the leaves come out. So I'm going to just remove some of these because we don't want them in the way because we know that the rooting will always take place at the node. So I'm just removing some of those leaves. And in this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six nodes. And I will take this one out, that one and maybe just leave that those ones at the top because we need that for the growth. But I might even just snip here again. So I'm going to just try to get it a bit further down and I'm going to snip it like just here. So that's one stem. And again, I will do the same here is just remove these ones. so as to expose the nodes. Again, I'm going to just snip it there, like that. Another one. <laughs> okay, just remove these foliage, because we don't need them. And again, slip just below a node. So once I have my cuttings here is what I will do is 
put it in a moist a soil for propagation purposes and, um, and then put it in a shaded area and I might just cover it with either a plastic just to make the propagation go quicker but we can see that later. So all I'm going to do is make sure the nodes are submerged. Just sticking it in the soil. So once we've finished with that process, what I'll do is just, although this is moist, I'm just going to pour very little because it is quite a, a warm day and the water seems to evaporate very quickly. And that would be your stem propagation. So what we'll do is actually keep it there. So that is your stem propagation. Now the other propagation, okay, we said is it is a self-seeding plant and it will scatter. So wherever you've planted, whether you've planted it and, over, and then over winter, the seeds are still in the ground. By the time spring comes, they will spring up. Now the other propagation is when you go for a root propagation. And what I did is I did pluck my plant and just so that you could see the rooting and the tap roots. The thing about this is that the tap roots are very strong and that's why they're so drought resistant. Because when you do look at the tap root as it goes looking for water, look at that. <laughs> this is the tap root. So out of this tap root, this is the original mother tap root. And all these little babies that come from the sides, is they all come from the mother tap root. I'm going to put this in here and just push it aside and just put this this side and so what we're going to do now is actually take some of those babies I've never done this before but we're going to try to propagate them from that mother tap root so I'm going to pull this here let me just put that one in here this is moist soil as you see it's got a lot of grit and we know that this plant does like sandy soil so I've got a lot of grit in here and it's actually beautiful. So what I'm going to do is that with this I'm going to take one of these here and just um, <laughs> this tap root and I did pull some out and I did put them in water. So this is what they look like once you've removed it from the mother root. These are what I'm going to try to propagate because I think it will work. So what I'm going to do is actually with these, I'm just going to cut some of that foliage out. And these are what I'm going to pot in here and we'll keep an eye. And as I mentioned, is I will cover it. So one goes in here, make your hole, put it in and cover two goes in here put it in and cover and we just continue doing this and putting it in the soil and cover and then what I'll do with these ones I will over tomorrow do the same thing and cover so now that we have propagated these ones which were attached to the taproot what I'm going to do is just pull this here. I've got some rubber bands. I'm just going to put that there. And then I'm going to pull this here. And this is cling foil. So what I'm going to do is actually cover it and give it that greenhouse effect in order to make the propagation go much faster. Now I'm covering my sweet little plant and I'm gonna to have to cut it here, right like that. And what you do is because the soil is still very moist and what you get is a lot of steaming and every few days, um, every second day, I will come in and look at it, open it so a lot of that moisture goes out. 
but basically I am just going to do it like that and it's given it a greenhouse effect. So what we have here is a stem propagation and here we have a root propagation using the taproot, all the little babies that are sprouting out of the taproot. So we have that here. And then what we said is the other way it does propagate is through self-seeding. And this is what will stay in the ground and then pop up in spring. So basically you have your three methods and we'll just keep monitoring it. So thank you fellow gardeners. This is our propagation for today. And there is always a first time when you have to try to experiment, but I do believe that these propagations will work. So we will follow them up, but I think think we're on the right, uh, right pace and thank you so much for joining us on this episode and always just remember press that notification button and subscribe and also check out our Instagram DM me DM me and I will always answer and also on our YouTube channel I do get a lot of uh, comments and I do try to answer them and it's always lovely to hear from you thank you so so much and have a lovely day Okay.